Welcome to Charlotte's Wandering Web with your adventurous guide to the good times, Charlotte Tweed. Each week, Charlotte takes you on the journey of a lifetime to a delightful Caribbean locale where the sun never sets on your good life at a great price. And now with her muy amigo, Carib Carter, here's your host, Charlotte Tweed. Hello, hello, hello. It's Carib Carter Clues. Welcome to Charlotte's Wandering Web, a very, very special edition today. We've had a lot of questions about medical care south of the border, okay, which is very important to people like me, we senior citizens. So Charlotte is, has brought aboard Tracy Griffith, a medical practitioner who is an expert because she's practice medicine down there. Charlotte, take it away. And Tracy, there we go. <laughs> Hello, Carter. I'm excited to have Tracy with us today. Tracy is an RN who is also a certified medical travel agent, and she just started writing for Escape Artist Insiders magazine. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Tracy, welcome. It's good to see you. It's good to talk with you. Thank this you. I appreciate y'all having me on this afternoon. Uh, this is an extremely important topic because a lot I know a lot of offshore club members are 50 and over. And they say to me, well, what if I get sick down there? And unfortunately, you know, my, my I I have a home, two homes in Honduras. And when I say Honduras and they say medical treatment, they think that if you have surgery in Honduras, Charlotte and I have discussed this, that they use uh, duct tape and an exacto knife. And I said, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> okay. So, so you're going to set us straight, right? I'm going to try. And yeah, the healthcare is one of the number one questions that I get to healthcare and safety. That's what everybody always asks about. And when I read the article that Tracy submitted for the August edition of Escape Artist Insiders, I thought we needed to have her on Charlotte's Wandering Web to to help everybody out. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. So Charlotte. Tracy, what countries south of the border have you um, practiced medicine in? Have you have you been a nurse in? How many of them? Which well, ones? Let me clarify that a little bit. But I am a registered nurse here in the U.S. and I've been practicing for um, 25 years. And then I stepped away from the bedside, the clinical setting, the end of um, 2020, right in the midst of COVID and started a medical tourism business. Um, I just love Mexico and Central America. My husband and I have been down there traveling before. And I just thought that there wasn't, people didn't know enough about what was going on down there and the different products that they had and the services that were available to people. There was kind of a little stigma going on, so to speak about, you know, the third world country thing. Yes. And um, just my general travels down there, I had not necessarily found that to be true. Um, as a U.S. citizen, as a U.S. nurse here, we don't get to practice in Mexico and Central America. Um, they actually save those jobs for um, their citizens and their people. So I, I got to clear that up a little bit. <laughs> that gives me too much credit. Um, however, I have gone down there um, as um, a um, medical tourism specialist and met with the different doctors and um, toured different hospitals in um, different areas of Mexico, Costa Rica, Panama City, Panama. And those have been my three um, countries that I have, um, you know, made sure that those were um, some of the ones that got more information on because they were such a hot area for um, expats. So you help people do pe do people come to you now and say like um i have i don't know kidney problems and is there some place down south of the border where they specialize in that or where i can go and get good treatment obviously considerably cheaper than in the u.s right well um I get questions, but mostly it's about things, not necessarily kidney treatment, like um, orthopedic surgery. Um, total knees uh, and hips are, are, a, are a big thing. Um, cosmetic surgery is a big thing. 
Um, dental is huge. And yeah. uh, I have a um, dental consultant that um, works with me who has had 30 years of um, dental hygiene experience. And so she travels with me and um, I kind of let her take the lead in the dental facilities and, and uh, make sure everything is um, status quo there. And, you know, to the um, type of um, um, product that we want to provide for our um, customers. So um, I know my wife had to have uh, implants, two front teeth, right? Mm -hmm. But she's Honduran. And it cost, I think, $6,000 up here. It would have cost six hundred, dollars And she said it would have been exactly the same in Honduras. Right. It, how, does that, how, how does that compare with what you found in other countries down there? Well, what specifically I found that, um, yes, the dollar amount is about the same. Um, depends on what area of um, the country you're in. It might be a little $100 difference here or there, whether you're in Costa Rica and um you know, or whether you are in Cancun, but um, generally speaking, what I have found is that they use the exact same products that we use here in the U.S. They have in-house labs. They don't have to send them off and wait for them to come back like a lot of wow. them, most U.S. dentists do. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they say specifically that they use the same products that we do in the U.S. because they understand that people have had uh, work done up here may have to have work done later and maybe they need to be have it at their home that time and they want to make sure that giving good customer service that at the end of the day everything matches you know Very so I, the fact that they would even think about that um excellent you know is um is to me it was like impressive mm -hmm. that's very very impressive and what about what what do you think some of the top surgeries now i have read like uh, things like knee replacements they a lot of people head south just because it's like a tenth of the price um cartilage repairs all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. what, what have you found along that line well what got me into researching some of this for an orthopedic beside myself <laughs> I, have, I have arthritis runs in my family and i just had both knees done in the last um less than a year wow. so um and I'm not that old. So it, sometimes it just happens. <laughs> but um, for instance, what I was reading an article, and this is a true story. The lady was Canadian. She was in her um, late, late 30s, early 40s. And she had been told she needed a knee replacement up in Canada. She happened to come down to Playa del Carmen and um, visiting a friend of hers. And they were like, you need to go see one of our doctors here orthopedics here and see what they have to say. They might can do it for you, you know, cheaper, faster, because if she this was like in 2019 and she had been told it would be um, 2021, beginning of 2022 before she could have her knee replaced. So she did go see this orthopedic doctor and she got worked up, had an MRI and, um, you know, he did an evaluation on her. And at the end of the day, she didn't even need a knee replacement. All she needed was just the arthroscopic um, clean up, meniscal tears, that kind of thing. Wow. And so they were able to do it literally within, you know, a week or less of while she was still here and the, um, you know, in and out, she didn't have to spend the night in the hospital. She, the therapy, physical therapy was included and everything. And so she, and she got it done and I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head, but it was something like $3,000 out of pocket total. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. That's not even uh, deductible for us here in the U.S. We're, we're going to have to pay more than that. <laughs> and and the time that you mentioned, Tracy, right, right. the time, like that's right. a key one in Canada. It it can take you mm -hmm. six months to three to five years to get your procedures done. Right. Well, yeah. and so that was actually the orthopedic that I sought out May of last year to um, talk with about doing money. We happened to be in Playa del Carmen for um, something else. And I just told my husband, I said, I want to make an appointment to go meet with him and talk with him. And I'm not going to tell him I'm in health care. And I'm not going to tell him I was an ortho nurse. And I'm not going to tell him I already know I need a knee replacement. I'm going to let him evaluate me and tell me what he thinks. <laughs> Good plan. <laughs> so he passed the test, you know, and I, in the last our last month's article, I posted the um, the information that he gave me as far as the cost and everything that was included in that, you know, so, so I thought that was um, a pretty good deal. They even had choices of hospitals and that was another thing. They have 
public to private hospitals. It's just what, how, how tight is your budget? Right. And then what quality, like how, how do you care if you have like the most upstanding of everything? Do you want a coffee maker in your room? Do you want literally an ocean view? I'm not kidding no. you. A what? <laughs> an ocean view from your hospital room. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, or, or do you just want to get in for the, for the, you know, the, um, the lowest price you can get it for and be done. So it just depends. Some people like to have the extra fluffy pillows and, you know, Amazing. that kind of sweets. So. Amazing. I, I live real near York hospital here in Pennsylvania and you have a choice of two views, parking lot or slum. <laughs> in Canada, you wouldn't get a private room either. There'd be four people in your room. No. Well, <laughs> there, you. yeah, in the, in the public hospitals, it is not always a private room. Mm -hmm. But um, in the in the um, the private hospitals, especially if you're expat coming in, medical tourism, you know, um, road. Yeah, they're always going to do the private rooms. They're always making sure that um, the nurses are not just good nurses but do they speak really good english because they yeah, know wow. that that's a fear for some people if that you know the community the, the language barriers yeah. and so they really do try to make sure that everything is set up to make you as comfortable as possible excellent excellent uh, the the only experience i personally had i broke my toe in honduras and went to the hospital in la Ceiba, and i spoke one word of of uh, Spanish, roto, <laughs> means broken, right? And pointed right. to my toe, but it was fantastic. I mean, they were wonderful. Essentially what they said, you know, there's not a lot we can do for a broken toe, as you know, you know, just right. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll help you. Well, the here's pain. the second word, dolor. That's the word for pain. Yes, dolor. So I don't speak <laughs> Spanish. I can order off a menu and I can read a road sign but when my, I actually have patients that speak only Spanish and I, Dolor, Uno, Dos, Train. So, you know, pain and give me a number because it's all about the pain scale. Mm. So that's go. the best I could do. Mm -hmm. What about, I know that we have a lot of uh, um, followers on Offshore Club who would, would love for you to talk about cosmetic surgery and the cost of it okay like mm. you know i got a little bit of turkey neck going here but it costs an arm and a leg up here so i'm yeah. just gonna have to keep gobbling what if i went like to costa rica or one of those or mexico what do you yeah. think well, i actually have a really good couple different doctors in um, costa rica who do um cosmetics um and um it's more of a case of you have to send your pictures in to let them actually be able to see what you want, what you have already. And then you have to get a cost based on exactly what is it going to take. You get a detailed price list okay. after they look at your pictures mm -hmm. and they see what's, you know, what you've had done or haven't had done, you know, weight loss, that kind of thing. Right. And then um, go from, they, they, like write it out, you know, exactly what you need to have done each step and then give you a generalized cost for that. And so they have hospitals. I think I, I read that like, in, I don't know about Mexico, but in Costa Rica, they have like resort hospitals. Like you go and stay for a week for, let's say a facelift or something. Is that right? I, th I think they do have some spa areas like that. Um, I don't know those areas. <laughs> yeah, they have they have some spa areas with um like some uh, nurse nursing. It's, they're not nurses, but they're like assistants that um, have been trained to help with different things. Because so you're going to have um probably a lot of drains and things like that sometimes after big um cosmetic procedures. Mm -hmm. But they can give you a ballpark price on everything, mm -hmm. but they can't give you the exact price until they actually get to see you in person a couple of days before the procedure. And then as any procedure, you never know until you actually get in there and, and to see what, is there something else that we need to do or something that maybe is worse than what you thought it was going to be a bigger deal. Right. And so right. all of that can affect um, your um, 
bottom line price too. And they tell you all that up front. There's, there's not any like hidden agendas or anything like that. They let you know that this is the, um, the generalized price. This is what you're having done. And this is, um, and then go from there. But it's going to be cheaper, yeah. a lot cheaper, right? That depends on where you're living. I mean, places like Miami, New York City, California, those are all like really high end cosmetic surgeons with really high end prices. You know, if you live in a smaller state, say like South Carolina, it's right. not going to cost you as much as it would in those three. So the price difference between California, South Carolina, and you know, Costa Rica, all that could just, it depends on where you're coming from and what you want to have done. Makes sense. And one thing too, Tracy, is the hospitals that you recommend, you vet them. You personally go and see them. Mm -hmm. Correct. I spent two hours one day talking to the, um, talking to a couple of doctors that were on the, um, the board of directors and everything and touring their hospitals. They were very um, glad to show me their big new MRI machine they had just got in. It's like top notch. You know, it was, it was pretty impressive. Uh, their endoscopy units, because I, I did endoscopy for a while. So um, their anesthesia machines, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I saw the, um, the actual private rooms with the um, ocean view. That's Cabo that has that. It, it's just wow. beautiful. It was more like a hotel room because they understand that your family is going to be there with you and they're trying to make them comfortable too. So. It's, it's just, it's just, it's amazing to me. I, how about even something like prescriptions? When I lived in Honduras, uh, I could go and get a prescription filled at the local Walmart it had a different name. I can't remember what it was now, but it was like a fraction of the cost in the U S yeah, I, I mean, a prescription that would have cost me three hundred dollars up here was like fifteen bucks. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, my husband um, has um, asthma that only bothers him when he runs his obstacle course races, <laughs> and um, the particular medicine is like three hundred and sixty dollars for one vial of it or whatever it is that you put into the, the puffer. Um, and that is with the discount that you get from like group on group X or whatever, um, the pharmacy discount card down there. I found it in um, Cancun for, I'm not kidding you, $35. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You got to know to look for the generic names. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the deal. You got to look for the generic names. Incredible. Now, Charlotte, you haven't, we've talked about this. You haven't, had any illness since you've been in Mexico, right? Except having the log fall on you. Except having the tree fall on me last yeah, week. Which I'm still a little fall. sore. <laughs> but I, I haven't had any issues. No. I, I I come from, well, I worked in healthcare for 10 years mm -hmm. in administration, not as a healthcare uh, practitioner. But you kind of just, you get used to not going. And even my family background, my dad was a hypochondriac. And my mother hated going to doctors. So I had such the opposite. So it's, I just don't. And I almost have to be dead before I go to a hospital. And I know well, that's what my children say, my children say being short, being the child of a nurse that right. you have to have some serious bleeding going on or the bone sticking out. <laughs> we take you to the doctor. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't bleeding and I had no broken bones and everything moved when I got hit last week. But I don't need to go to the doctor. But there's there's also a running joke with um, healthcare providers, um, especially nurses, because um, not only my nurse, my husband's a CRNA, he does nursing anesthesia. My youngest sister is a registered nurse, and my niece is a registered nurse. Wow. And you know what's better than a doctor? No. Two or three nurses. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's a running joke in healthcare. <laughs> You don't need a doctor if you got two or three nurses because you all just brainstorm together and figure it out. I, yes, yes, I went to the, I had to the doctor yesterday to a urologist, and it was a I, I guess what what's it called the the person that met with me was a nurse I think a nurse practitioner nurse practitioner the mm -hmm. whole thing right yeah. they're doing a lot of the um the doctors visits now and the doctors will wait and um do the different actual procedures because they just don't have enough time to get it all done. Okay. Okay. 
Very good. So is there, let me, how about treatment for something advanced? Like if, let's say a person has a heart problem and you know, my brother had a heart transplant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like eight or nine years ago now, I, mm -hmm. you know, and he, he he has a lot of other problems now, but the heart is fantastic. I always tell him when you die, we're going to have to beat your heart to death with a baseball bat to close the lid of the casket because it's just going to keep on going, right? But he is afraid to move south of the border because he's not sure about, because of his heart condition. What do you, what, what would you say about something like that? You're the well, expert. Card cardiology is not a field that I have been um, looking into down there um, so far. Like I said, my, my business, I've only had it going less than two years now, and I've concentrated right. on the areas that um, that most people are looking for. But cardiology, though, from what I've read about it, is um, is it's, it's the same thing up there as it is here. It's just it doesn't cost as much. <laughs> <laughs> and you get in sooner. They help right. you sooner. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I mean, I have heard people say that they've gone down there um, and um, every, you know, every year, or every two years or however, and had their full cardiac workup that they needed to have done. Their wife wow. and, um, you know, him and his wife went and like all at one time within one week, they had everything they needed to have done in a year. You know, whatever they needed to have for their like um, treatments or um, pre-existing conditions you know, having to check everything out. You know, if um, if you if you needed a colonoscopy, they did that that week. If she needed a GYN checkup for the year, they did that. Like he had um, he had some cardiac issues, and so he would have um, a full cardiac workup while he was down there. So um, all of that's available available quicker than you think you can get it at a fraction of the cost. A fraction of the cost. That's right. fantastic. What about the um, the personal interactions. I mean, uh, it, to me, the way you're treated as a human being, because being sick is bad enough without having some, you know, uh, some sort of cold react, clinical reaction. How, uh, what have you found in, in your work, the reaction people have to, to the interact, personal interactions? Right. So we got to experience the emergency room in Bocos del Toro's Panama last year. Um, we were in that, um, and, and for people who don't know that area, is the um, Caribbean side of Panama, and it's um, a much more um, low-income area, but it's gorgeous. And the first day we were there, we stopped and got something to eat. The only person out of the four of us that ate their vegetables that day was my husband. He had his oh. salad. And he started getting sick that night and he ended up with food poisoning. And by Tuesday, <laughs> he was sick as a dog and he, <laughs> he's not one to ever go to the hospital either. So we ended up in the um, emergency room of Bocos. This was um, a pretty new building they had just built in the last couple of years. Um, and I did not expect to have that kind of service in that kind of area and it to be as shiny pretty and clean as it was wow. so um i didn't get to go back there with him which i was not happy about um but it was during the COVID thing and everything but so but they did go ahead and give me like prescriptions and i had to find my way to pharmacy and get those filled it wasn't difficult especially for somebody speaking no spanish right you know i still had to ask questions about how to get to you know the different places and um they didn't have um, a certain medicine at the hospital pharmacy. So they sent me into town to this other pharmacy and I really didn't have any trouble. They were very good to him. He said that, you know, when he were back there, they got antibiotics. Of course, they wanted to test him for COVID because, you know, you get a GI bug, you must have COVID. Don't get me started on that, but that's all another case <laughs> scenario. But um, they did treat him very good and they um, gave him everything he needed to get back up and go and, and it didn't cost a dime. Wow. But, but when you go into Panama as a tourist, you also they automatically you also get this um this um tourist um insurance there. And I don't know that much about it. We always do travel with travel insurance anyway. But right. um but you pay some little like fourteen dollar fee or something and you're covered for anything that happens to you if you get sick while you're in Panama. 
I can't tell you the details on that because I wouldn't plan to talk about that today. <laughs> but <laughs> they didn't ask us for anything. It, it was all covered under that little policy. So, and, wow. so that was pretty impressive because that would have easily been between the labs they did and the IVs that they hung and the fluids they hung. That could have easily been a thousand dollars here in the States. That's fantastic. Well, Charlotte, how do you feel as someone living there about the prospect of getting sick? Do you, do you feel like, oh, my God, I'll rush back to Canada or do you feel comfortable? No, no there where I am here in Ahihik, there's there's five hospitals here and one of them was built in 2019 so, and it, it state of the art as well. It looks like a beautiful facility. I haven't toured them. You can go and tour them, but I have not done that yet. So, and I did talk extensively to a couple of expats and got some of their stories of how they've experienced healthcare. Same like what Tracy said, she comes down, gets her full work over and it's you know, $50 for her, for her annual checkup. So, oh, and wow. I do talk about that a couple episodes back in depth on certain procedures of people that she knows what they've gone through, what she's done. So when I do the show notes, I'll, I'll put a little link back to that episode because we don't have another half hour to, to go into those details, but they have had experience here in Ahihik in the hospitals and they have been very good. So let me, well, yeah, I mean, that that's exactly, you know, that really is the feeling I had when I lived in Honduras. I really mm -hmm. felt like if I got sick, there, there were. As a matter of fact, San Pedro Sula, the hospital complex, is, is uh, part of the Johns Hopkins um, Medical, uh, whatever you call it, corporation mm -hmm. up here in the U.S. So it's first, first rate. But like, let me ask you a question, Tracy. If I decided I wanted to have dental work done, can I just call you and say where should I go in south of the border? Um, you could add, we can talk about it and I can tell you what I have available mm -hmm. really? um, in which country. Cause I have dentist in a couple of different places in Mexico and in Costa Rica. And you can just go, you know, decide when you're going to go on vacation and have it done at the same time. You can see. I, like had a first day. I had a crown break off. Uh, right. Back there. right. So wow. what happens for a crown? You can go in the very first day you're in town. And you can go ahead and get your fitting done and everything. And um, they'll give you a temporary while, um, to use while you're, they're making your new one. And then you can go on about your vacation, having fun. And while they make your crown in house and then um, before you leave town, you come back in and you get it fitted back on. And then so you can have it done in a much shorter time than you can here in the States. Unbelievable. Oh, by the way, you can get a water view at the dentist office, too. I actually have <laughs> pictures and a video of that. This is in Cancun. I saw the lagoon side of the um, of the main road. And so you have the lagoon pictures um, view when you're sitting in the chair. I am not kidding you. I was like, are you serious? Can I just have lunch here while I'm here? You know, bring me a glass of wine or a cocktail and I'll just stay the afternoon. This view is gorgeous. Um, my no. dental assistant's like, I might just, I might just come work here. You know, forget going back to the States. So she's a dental hygienist, not an assistant, but she's like, I can just come work here. It'll be fine. Wow. Wow. Um, how do people get hold of you? What, <laughs> do, yeah, what's your, the email you, is that what we should do? Well, I have a website is healthcareadventures.com. And on there, healthcareadventures. Healthcare Adventures. Mm -hmm. Healthcareadventures.com. Right. And then, um, so there's a way on there to get a hold of me. Or you can also email me at info at healthcare-adventures.com. Or you can come and look in, in the Insiders Magazine and um, contact me through there. Healthcareadventures.com. There we go, right there. There it yeah, is. There, there mm -hmm. it is. Yeah, thank you, yep. Gary. That's fantastic. So the Charlotte, the when 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 is Insiders Magazine going to come out with uh, with, with Tracy's article in it? August first is the next edition when it comes out, and Tracy talks quite a bit about healthcare insurance and that type of thing, which Fantastic. and getting your healthcare plan B in place. 
And her first article was last month. So if you subscribe now, you can get her first article that she submitted for July. Mm -hmm. That's pretty fantastic. That is great. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm excited to have her on board because this is information that people need. It's about their health. And I know, you know, so many Canadians will, that's a fear they have of leaving the country because they think their healthcare is free when it's not free, their taxes no. pay for it. So they'll leave, come down as snowbirds and go back because they don't want to lose their health care. Right. And, you know, people will ask, how can you leave Canada for six months? What about your health care? I'm like, I don't care about the health care in Canada. Well, sometimes Tom is money. Tom is money. Yeah. You might can have it done for free, but how long do you have to wait? How much pain do you have to be in? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. It's good I to have options. Now we have options mm -hmm. and we can go to Charlotte's Insiders Magazine at uh, Escape Artists. And when the other escapeartists.com, it's right there on the on the home page, right, where they can subscribe. It is. There's a subscribe tab at the top and you can also preview the current magazine on the on the home page as well. Fantastic. Charlotte does a heck of a job with this stuff. I'm just I'm thrilled. Yeah. Yeah, I am thrilled. And I, you know, it's just, uh, I love she has, she has me in there every month, which I just thoroughly enjoy. Makes so like does everybody. everybody. Ever, thank you. Thank you. So this has been great. This has been absolutely. Hey, I, I've been a, I, I was a customer from Insiders Magazine before I knew any of you. So <laughs> I was already a fan. That's, That's awesome. Excellent. Well, I, I have exhausted everything I needed to know. I'm ready to go down and get my get my crown. Which side? Where? Down there. Here. Right there. Right there. Yeah. Chewing a piece of bubble gum. I will never, I now have learned when you get to be 76 years old, don't buy a double bubble balls <laughs> anymore. It's over. Give I'm it done. to your grandkids. <laughs> Charlotte, you have anything you want to wrap up here for us? No, I think we covered everything that I'd hoped to cover and introducing people to Tracy and her services. And you can always invite me back if you think of some other things. I absolutely will. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thanks for having me. Tracy, thank you, Charlotte. Once again, this has been fantastic. We love it. We do this every week. It's just great. I look forward to it. And uh, I will see you again next Tuesday, right? And we will do it again. Thank All you. Right. And Tracy, thank you very, very much. This is thank excellent. You too, Carter. Folks, Charlotte. now you know when it comes to medical needs, where to go. <laughs> Let's do this thing. Let's do it.